There's very few students that have nothing, that have no devices. Um, we ran a pilot project a couple of years back with Sprint, and Helen, my colleague, uh, who works at John Jay, she, she ran it. Uh, what, was the, what was it called? The, the, where you did the micro mobile test? Yeah, with the, yeah right. We, we ran it right after she ran it. And the, you know, we took the ratings afterwards, the survey afterwards, and the students loved it. So we knew that this was the right way to go. Um, you can provide your students with audio podcasts or audio lectures. Uh, you can provide them with audio and video lectures. And the most important thing is your students will have access to you 24-7 on their schedule. And that's the, that's the nice thing. I wish like I had that when I was in college. If I could you know, hear my professor talk at 3 in the morning instead of at 3 in the afternoon. The article that I handed out comes from the Wall Street Journal. I believe it was from last spring. And you can you know, take a glance at the article. This is becoming very, very popular, where professors are actually reporting their lectures in advance. And they're putting them up on Blackboard, or they're delivering them with some sort of an LMS to the students. And the students will have the lecture. They go to listen to the lecture before they go to class. And then once they get to the classroom, the, the real learning is done. So the students will have the information beforehand, and then when they get into the venue, they, they get into the classroom, you know, then that's when the real learning takes place, as far as, you know, as, far as, um, as far as that would be concerned. All right, so there's more, on, there's more on this, but I just want to give you a quick demo because I know we're going to be on short on time. This is um, my co-presenter here uh, is not able to make it, but this is a combined uh, LAC HIS course, uh, Latin American Studies, where the professor has put all of his lectures, and you'll notice all the content areas. He's got his syllabus here, all of the assignments. There's a section for the lectures, and the students are able. I've uh, set it up so the students are able to actually download the lecture if they want it take it and they want to put it on their smartphone or their iPad so they can listen to it on the train or the bus or wherever they have it be. There's movies in here. We take clips of movies and we put them up for the students. There's readings, discussion board, midterm, and final. There's, we put the PowerPoints that the professor actually uses in his lecture. And this is, what, this is the outcome of what it looks like. So the students are able to see their professor right there in the corner, and they're also able to follow along with the. Uh... Hi, welcome to Introduction to Latin America and the Caribbean 2. Uh, this is a, a, a course that, uh, as its name clearly says, it, is uh, supposed to give you the first basic elementary information about Latin America now uh, and the Caribbean of course now I want you to uh, give a look uh, at this time or maybe you have already done so to the syllabus that uh, you have in in the files uh, in which you would see that this course is divided in different parts today we are uh, focusing on part number one which is made of three sessions uh, these uh, three sessions are supposed to be the uh, first um, taste of what is Latin America from three different perspectives. In part number, in session number one, I am going to give you the general objectives of uh, uh, the course, which is basically to talk about. I don't want to. I don't want to put it to see, but. Um, what, what we do is we record his lectures and uh, we record them, generally we do them in my office, we do them a number of different places, but it works out very well with the Camtasia, with the piece of software that we use. Has anybody heard of Camtasia before? Oh, has anybody used it? Yeah. Uh, so some people have heard, some people have actually used it. Um, you'll find that it's a little bit, it's a little bit difficult to learn, it's, the learning curve is a little bit uh, high, but once you start to use it, once you get fluent with it, 
it's I can do it in I can do it in my sleep now. Um, it really works out very well. The students like it. The professors the professors really like it because they're able to put their lectures up once and we can roll them over. That's the other nice thing is that we roll them over from semester to semester. And if the professor simply wants to tweak the lecture a little bit, um, he or she can do that. We can remove, we can edit, we can insert, uh, because I save all those files, and it just makes it a whole lot easier for us and the professor who's teaching online, and it makes it much easier for the students as well. The students really like uh, this type of presentation, at least we found. Um, there was a professor here, one of our teachers was here earlier, and he, since uh, Jose couldn't make it today, his, uh, this other professor, uh, Polo, was not, wasn't able to stay. But his ratings for his course were very, were like a 9.9. I mean, they were just really right up there. I mean, this, and the student comments were great. The students really liked it. Um, uh, they get a lot out of it. They can review the material as often as they want. Um, everything is right there for them. And it just makes it so much easier for the students to get, uh, acquire the knowledge that they want. And they can do it at their own schedule. So that's the thing that we like about it. Does, how much, how, how are we doing our time? Five minutes. Okay, so do we have questions, discussion? Yes? You have to use what the specific reporting equipment and can you make your own quality? We have, we have uh, professors that use their own, they'll use iTunes, or what is it, iMovie, iMovie. They'll use iMovie and they'll do it on their Mac. Some professors will do, like we have one professor in the health services area, she will just do audio lectures. She doesn't want the student seeing her face. So she'll put, she'll put audio lectures up on the class and she records them right on her laptop. I gave her the software, if you just wanted to record uh, your lectures, um, audio. There's a free piece of software which is a wonderful tool and I can't believe they give it out for free. It's called Audacity. It's a wonderful tool. Um, it's a full-fledged audio recorder and it takes, your, takes, your, uh, takes your, your audio file and it makes it an MQ3. You load it up on Blackboard like you would put up a, like you would post the document. Yes? Uh, yeah, you said you put clips of movies in those courses. How do you um, deal with copyright? Uh, well, that's a very good question. Um, I, I consulted with uh, the CUNY legal department, and they said the word that I got was as long as it's not a full length feature and it's the clip of the movie, you can get away with using it under, the, I think, what they call the Fair Use, Fair Use. Fair Use Act. Whereas if you're not distributing it, so we make, we make those clips, they can't download them. We set them up so they can't download them. They can just watch them. Um, I've had many a conversation with people on that. And anything from YouTube is fair game, right? Pretty much, yeah. But we had a professor who wanted to show Roots in her class. And it was when I looked for it, this is just the other day, it was there. When she went to go look for it uh, just last week, it was gone. So they had pulled it off. So they must be sweeping. Um, I think you do have to be a little bit careful about the content that you put up there, and a lot of times professors are very cagey about what they want to get out there, or what they want people to see and hear. Um, what I would say to that is that the only people that can get to your information is the students that are actually enrolled in the course. If they're not enrolled in the course, they can't get to your information. Of course. There was a really good website at the University of Texas on use of copyright and video materials even within the Blackboard environment. I don't know the URL of something yet, but it was uh, University of Texas Austin. Had a really good breakdown of it. There's also a website on the community.edu site that's maintained by the Office of Library Services that has a lot of copyright. Yeah, I, I, I frequently look at that. <laughs> so if we could maybe save the questions and comments for the um, time at the end of all the presentations, no that would be great. Um, so thank you very much again. Thank you.